Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Hit Confirm. I am one half of this combo, Casey, joined by my gracious host, Mr. Annual. It's been a long time, bro. <laughs> hey, man, you know they call me coach these days, but hey, it has been a <laughs> while. Uh, we've been on a good old break, and yeah, a lot of things have been happening, uh, not just in the world at large, but uh, in the world we'll be talking about, FGC, good and bad, a lot of bad. Yeah, uh, a lot of bad stuff been going on, but through the bad stuff, we have a little good, good, a little bit of like silver lining there, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, there's definitely some uh, growing pains. Um, again, like we've been, we've mentioned this a, a lot of time, a lot on the stream or the show about, um, you know, the transition thanks to the pandemic and how a lot of things have changed. And this is the current events are kind of part of that as well. Yeah, and honestly, personally, I don't really try to put too much weight on a lot of, I guess, big companies and uh, I guess now is the content creators. They're they're the ones that have been coming through now. So, but still, I don't really try to put too much weight on anybody because this was so unexpected for this year. Yeah. Um, so people have had, like you said, content creators have had to do a lot of different things. Like I've been seeing people like you know, stream flashbacks, reviewing their old tournament footage, like, you know, what I was thinking in this grand final set at Evo or Combo Breaker and whatever. So a lot of people have been trying to get out of their creative, you know, or get into a more uh, creative spaces outside of, you know, let me just stream ranked. And so that's been interesting as well. Yep, even we got started doing, like, the podcast <laughs> again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. A lot of people have been uh, talking – I can't say a lot of people, but you know, a, good, a good amount of people have, you know, spoken to me and said that they've enjoyed it. And I'm, I'm glad for it. And I'm glad that, uh, you know, we provided you any entertainment or inf information. Glad. I'm glad, too, man. I really appreciate you guys. But, you know, we got to get into this. You know what happened recently? The Japanese fighting game Dev Roundtable. Yeah, that's that's been the talk of the, that's been the talk of the town because, you know, Again, that's how this transition has happened. So, given the events that happened with Evo, there's not been there's been an open space of how they're going to promote their stuff, tell us what what they're up to, and so they've decided to, like you said, adopt a format of a roundtable where they get on an online call, and uh, from major developers like I'm trying to remember who was all there. It was Capcom, Arxis, Bandai Namco, um, Arika, and um, Tecmo. SNK. And yep, SNK. and Tecmo. Yep, SNK and Tecmo, yep. So, yeah, they got together, the, you know, the the big heads, the developers, the important folks, and they got a, and they just, just kind of had a discussion, and and it didn't go over too well with a good amount of folks, though some people were pretty okay with it, and again, it depends on your expectations, how much cynicism you have, but some things that people wanted to address didn't get addressed, but uh, we'll, we'll, start from the, we'll start from the beginning. T tell me your thoughts. So from the beginning, I was kind of already getting look, looking at it sideways because the official or the initial stream uh, location or whatever wasn't really on Twitch at first. So I had to go to I think another um or no it was supposed to be on YouTube at first I think uh, and I had to go to another right? address. Yeah, it was like it just was kind of confusing already in the beginning, right? Yeah. It wasn't a direct like you know information on that. But other than that, I was like, you know what, whatever. It's, I'm happy that this is actually even happening in the first place because they could have been doing this behind closed doors. And, you know, so I was like, you know what? I'll take it. So we go in and immediately you see um, Giuna and I forgot the guy with Tekken from Tekken. Uh, uh, I, Michael Murphy. Michael like Murphy, yes. Something and they're like both the, um, the Western translators. And I think they <clears throat> did a pretty good job because it's hard to translate that fast with all those devs on the screen when they're going back and forth and talking in Japanese. So I really like have to like give them like, you know, 
I have to really, you know, I really appreciate that for them, you know. Yeah. So it was really, really cool. I'm sorry, that was Michael Murray for those you know who's gonna Michael wind Murray. up later. But yeah, yeah. Actually, he's <laughs> actually um he's actually a producer up there. So he's a you know, he's a Westerner who's over there works in Japan. So, you know, he's already working in the band dynamic. Yep. Yeah, and it's cool because like you had him, he knew some people that you know, that most people probably didn't know about. And then same thing for Giuna, he knew some people that most so it was like a great combination. Mm -hmm. But um going into it, uh my i was kind of like neutral i didn't have my expectations too high but at the same time i was kind of like well they did say they were going to have some like special showcases at the end like one hour is going to be like answering questions and the next hour is going to be the showcase of like you know whatever they wanted to announce or anything so i guess honestly i wasn't too enthusiastic about the um actual like first hour um, and one big one that everybody was pretty much talked up about on Twitter and everything was the uh, get this out of the way first is the net code. Mm -hmm. uh, they didn't they didn't speak too much about it. I think the uh, the small dev Akira was the only one. Yeah, that yeah. So that that is important. That's a, that is a very important note, and I'll get to that. You know, at you at you drop your uh, <laughs> your thoughts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So like um. That that I wasn't really bothered by that talk, and I actually find to talk about the um the why crossplay is so hard, kind of interesting, you know, just to hear their perspective on that and what they've actually tried to go through and they tried to do it, and I thought that was pretty interesting. So I was happy to get that information, you know, I'll take it. Um, but then when they started talking about um, what was it? What was it improved? Oh, different controllers, I guess. That was kind of I don't know. Oh, uh, they were talking about um uh, like how the arcade sticks are not like the default thing that you use to play now, or they're yeah. not needed to play the games now. When he said like before, when they first started out in these games, they felt like you couldn't really play the games on pad for the precise pre precision and speed you needed to stick. And they said that kind of culture and mindset is kind of fading away with the younger generation and playing as pad is seen more as the fault now. Yeah, and you had like the old heads like Daisuke up there and they were saying how like they grew up playing on like stick and everything. So it lets me know that that tells me that they were still like trying to keep the spirit of like, you know, the old school uh, fighting style in there with the with stick controllers, but at the end of the day, they understand their market is not arcades anymore, <laughs> and and because that's dying out, and it's now it's now console, and like they want to make the games easier. So I understand that, but I think they're like at the same time, like I was saying, like they were, It seems like they were trying to hold on a little bit more to that um to that um old school style, which in my opinion, I think. They can do both. <laughs> I see that. Like, you, I mean, it, it's not always just like directly like straight, straight easy inputs, right? They might increase buffer windows, make it just a little, a little bit looser for people who write pads. And then, of course, like, even though this is kind of old, but you know, macros, they start they have to start to think like, you know, what if this player uses these macros? Unlike in the arcade days, you didn't have to think about that. So exactly. when you balance something, you got to consider that they don't have to press two buttons at the same time and potentially mess it up. Yeah, so I thought that 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 conversation was pretty interesting. Um, <clears throat> they, well, I mentioned, I already mentioned the uh, crossplay. I think uh, that's when they kind of started talking about. Um, I'm trying to remember what else did they get to? Because uh, I remember topics? being, yeah, I'm trying. No, that was the ones that stuck out to me. So. <laughs> The other ones I probably like wipe my from my brain. <laughs> okay. So yeah. The, so the other I guess big one, quote unquote, would be they talked about AI in two senses. Um, one sense <laughs> in like having a smart matchmaking system, and the other sense on having a um like a smarter dummy dummy opponent, like you know, kind of like the what Sam Show tried to do, what KI does. Um. So yeah. those two concepts came up. Yeah, I sleep on that. <laughs> because, <laughs> because honestly like 
you, you, I think you've already have games that do it pretty well, like Ki apparently, yeah, with yeah. the AI mm-hmm. and um, and honestly, I if I I don't know, I just don't see that as being a too much of a uh, that shouldn't be too much of a priority in my opinion. If it wouldn't be so much a priority if you had the net code really good. <laughs> no, I. I, I, I will have to slightly disagree with you on that just because I think, you know, if you can have, you know, advanced AI and you can scale it and you can have it do certain things like and make it really smart and able to kind of scale for certain skill levels. And then for people right. who get anxiety from playing other people, you can give them a safe environment, you know, from the, away from the anxiety to just, you know, go nuts and not feel stupid, embarrassed. Like it's kind of silly talking about that online, but, you know, ranked anxiety is just in like League of Legends, Overwatch you know, fighting games. And so, like, you can kind of remove that from the equation. You can give someone kind of, like, their own learning tool. And it could be a learning tool for advanced players, too, if it is actually smart enough to do things. Yeah. I just think that's harder to perfect than than the other stuff that we out that we have available to us these days. But it could get better. And it, it's it, I will say it has gotten better over the years from uh, with KI. So I, I will admit that. So... Yeah, to me, it ends up being sort of like what you're saying, is putting the car, uh, the cart before the horse because, one, you know, there's other pressing issues. But even if you take that aside, if KI, KI, KI has already done it and has put a blueprint out there for you, why is it a big thing? Like, yeah. And for both guys, because uh, AI has pretty a fairly smart matchmaking because, you know, a lot more has a lot more healthy player base because of uh, even after how long it's been out for, for the obvious reasons. And, uh, so, like, they've already covered a lot of these issues in some games already that they can look at. So, it's like, you know, you know they're having a roundtable. Like, what do we do about this? And then you look over there, and you saw what somebody else did about it. And that is highly acclaimed. And it's just a weird disconnect there. Yeah. And then you might have to start from square one, depending on which fighting game it is, from, like, maybe, like, 3D versus, like, uh, 2VT, 2, uh, 2D game or versus or a versus game, right? <laughs> a 3v3. Yeah. Might be completely different with that, so yeah, very true. So uh, um, go, go I will say the next one for me was um, you know, I was just happy to see them honestly there, you know, <laughs> doing this. Like I said before, because they could have been doing this behind closed doors, and like they all look like you know, it. it I'm pretty sure they were happy to see. It, it was like because like you hear some stories about like how one company negotiates with the other and they talk with the other but you know you don't you know it that sometimes it's like rumors you don't know if it's true or whatever so like to see this and to be like it's kind of like we were a fly on the wall it was, it was really cool yeah so, um like if you watch the english stream i did as well like it wasn't a straight translation but they were picking parts of it they found interesting and one thing that uh I think Michael mentioned was like, yeah, like usually this, these people don't all talk to each other. Harada is like the kind of the common thread. And so like them all getting together with something that like does not happen in that capacity. And so they all kind of got together and they were able to like talk through things. And then, yeah, it was, a uh, it was awkward. And like they had to format <laughs> where they were going to like do this amount of time per question. Then it ended up just being like a free for all where somebody's answering the question and they're using like eight minutes. And then the next person's using like nine minutes. And so like each company didn't get a chance. So like they could better organize it if they do it again. And I don't feel I really took anything away from it personally outside of the Eureka thing. Um, Cause, well, I guess you, if you, if you're excited about KOF 15, but we'll go back and get to that in a second. <laughs> but uh, it's like, yeah, they like, cause, it, cause the first question was like, you know, what, what is it you decide to do when you pick characters? I, I thought, I thought it was kind of interesting. Where you know they'd be like, you know, T- Koei Tecmo was like, we're gonna f- make the story, and then we're gonna figure out what characters go in there. And then Capcom's like, you know, has this character been around? You know, and they and somebody mentioned, I don't remember if it was Dice K or somebody's like, yeah, sometimes characters are enormously popular, you know, to the fans who like their design, but then they don't want to play them when they're actually I out of the game. Too, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so there's there was there was interesting tidbits. I wouldn't say it was like all blah, but it's like. You know, depending on your level of cynicism, you could say, you know, there's a good bit of lip service because there's the Western fans clearly wanted to hear a certain thing, right? Like yeah. where they're gonna take their, you know, their rollback, you know, the netcode with rollback and you know stuff like that, like making lobbies better and stuff like that. How to make online palatable? And so, Eureka at the end is like, 
you know, after, you know, you got <laughs> Nishitani son there just sitting there looking at the camera. He barely says anything through the whole thing, right? <laughs> <laughs> and at the end, like, everyone's like, you know, I imagine, because I wasn't in, I, I wasn't watching the Twitch chat. I don't do that. But uh, <laughs> I imagine a lot of people were just like, are they going to say the R word? Are they going to say it? And then he starts talking about it. He's like, yeah, we recently, um, in Fighting EX Layer, we put in the rollback patch. And, in fact, it'll be out tonight for the PlayStation 4 and Steam. And it actually was. I downloaded it that night. But uh, How is it, by the way? I wonder um, it's, it's still a little awkward, right? I imagine they're going to have to keep updating it and stuff because um, – I think it is not properly scaled or something. I'm not sure. I'm not an expert because okay. I was playing somebody, or I'll just say his name, Dogi, um, Dogi Sandwich, and we were playing, and it felt okay. But it's like you know, our, we're pretty close to each other, so we can like afford to lower the um, threshold of delay. You know, like some games will let you like Schoolgirls or Samurai Showdown Five Special. They'll let you uh, control how much delay is in the um, connection. And so, like, if you got a good ping, you can, like, lower it down to make it more smoother. And if it's higher, then you, you up it just so it can roll back properly. But, I, but since uh, Fighting EX Layer does not have that, um, so even when you have a good connection, it can, it can feel a little choppy at times. But for the most part, you know, it's functional. It feels like, you know, you can do your inputs and your combos. And so that's, it, it, it does its job at the very bare minimum. That's good, and, he, and they're at least trying, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're they're a smaller company, and like <laughs> a lot of the uh, notion is, um, you know, Bandai Namco, you know, SNK or whoever, y'all are so big. Why can't y'all do what this small company did? But uh, the small company, you know, they have more control of their resources, their workers, and so they can they can move towards a goal in a unified fashion much faster, even though they don't have the amount of resources to knock it out as fast as a bigger company. So the bigger company has politics and other things and they got to, you know, roll out their budgets for the year. And then they, so if putting in rollback doesn't uh, fit in their budget, they got to play politics. And so they, it has a harder time for a bigger company, even if they have the resources. That's how I feel about it. No, that, that makes sense because, uh, it, they have they have less of a risk when the smaller companies right that's what it seems whereas in like the bigger companies they have bigger paychecks to pass around so if they says let's say like if something doesn't go well then like you know that that hurts sales and everything and then that's you know they got to explain to like everybody else what went wrong and and then we, we we did something new once you explain something and you and it and the reason why is because you did something new that especially in Japan, that's kind of like, whoa, what? <laughs> so I understand that side of it. So that makes sense. Yeah, and, and you can even look at it the other way around too, right? Because a, a smaller company, they have more investment in their game. So it is more of a risk in that sense that, you know, their one game has to do like amazingly well. So they can't afford to, you know, skimp and cut corners. They have to make sure that it's a product that they can put out and have it be supported for a decent amount of time. As opposed to, like, if Bandai Namco fails a game, their company doesn't go crashing and burning, right? Because they have so many franchises and so much stuff going on that, you know, all they can do is, like, you know, wag their finger at the person, maybe demote them, move them to another department or whatever it is they do. As opposed <laughs> to a smaller company, it's like, well, man, we might have to back this up. Nobody bought this. <laughs> yeah. But, uh... Yeah, I think I think it was interesting, and I don't I don't want to be like it was bad. It was like like I didn't get anything significant from it personally, but I do like the format, and I do hope they come back and do it on a regular basis. And you know they don't have to just roll on about roll back. There's so many things I actually want to know about, like you know the challenges of um, developing an Unreal Engine, or if they should make their own engine, and you know feedback versus from uh players in the west versus the east and you know why aren't you know continents like africa and da 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 in south america included in a lot of their esports stuff so that's that's the heavy stuff that i would be interested in personally yeah and i i even i have questions like how do they go about making their decisions on microtransactions and stuff like that or yeah, like yeah, yeah. with dlc in general like why do you how do you go about bringing certain stages in to the furry and certain so that that's other go more than beyond just the characters right so i wish the the question part was kind of like longer i don't and that's the kind of i guess the small disappointing 
factor I had in the, in the first hour. Yeah, just I kind of mentioned that really like a better organization of uh, how they answer questions, who's answering what, and um, you know keep you can kind of keep the free form aspect of it, but like make sure everyone gets their chance to speak on a subject if they want to speak on, and I think it'll go smoothly. Yeah, and they don't they're not they're not trying to have a great debate up in there. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, they were, they were they were pretty civil about that, but it's just like you know when somebody starts talking and then they hit all the high points and then. Everyone else is like, well, I guess he said what I was gonna say. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Um, I was. Uh, what was another thing to um. Uh, before we get into netcode, how did you feel about um? Uh, yeah, let's get into a, a K- KOF. Okay. Cause I, I, I have a friend who's really deep, deep, deep into KOF games and SNK games in general. Mm-hmm. Uh, a, uh, Hollaback. Yeah, yeah, a, I know. Yeah, yeah, Hollaback. He um, every now and then when I talk to him, um, we'll mention like you know KOF fifteen and like we'll all we'll always remind ourselves like oh yeah, maybe like the next coming like whatever big announcement or whatever like thing that happens next we can we need to look out for it. So this I didn't I honestly didn't care until literally it was I saw SNK's uh. They were there on screen. I was like, because uh, oh, I, I for, totally forgot about KY15, and I, that's kind of bad, I guess. I don't know. I mean, they announced but, it a year ago at Evo, and they have not mentioned it in <laughs> any capacity. Literally, have not mentioned it in any capacity. Yeah, like we only had like the title, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, and they haven't said anything on social media or anything like that. It's like they said they teased it and did nothing. So that's yeah. why everyone was kind of in a tizzy about it. And then, uh, yeah, and at the developer uh, round table, at the very end, they were kind of like skirting around the issue because they had just talked about how um, Samurai Showdown's getting a third season. So they intend to keep uh, supporting that game, that which might be an indicator that uh, KOF 15 might still be a good ways off. But that's just yeah, my that's speculation. Yeah, that's a good point. But, no, uh... that's a, that's a good point <laughs> because I was I was gonna say like when as soon as I saw uh, the, the third season for uh, Sam Show, I got hyped and I got sidetracked. I was like, oh, what characters are going to add and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I, <laughs> so. Yeah, they were like, it was pretty funny because they didn't want to say the game by name and then eventually it's kind of cracked and like, yeah, upstairs, they're working on King of Fighters. And so, <laughs> you know, a lot of people have been speculating, you know, you know, they're trying to put in rollback netcode or uh, something's wrong or, you know, it could be anything, right? Because like right. If you have a big project development, hell is a real thing where, you know, someone might be messing with the budget or somebody might be, you know, leading the project astray, and then they realize it too late, and they're like, oh, we got to go back and do all this, because, like, project management is a beast if you get it wrong, and then going back and fixing it takes a lot of time and money, and so, like, if they get stuck in development hell, hopefully it won't be like a, you know, that what's that Duke Nukem game? Duke Nukem Forever? Forever? Yeah, like, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. It won't be that bad, but that's the concept I'm talking about, where it's just, like, politics and a whole bunch of stuff gets in the way. And I imagine that's what's happening up there. It's not like yeah. they just want to put rollback netcode or they're just too dumb to announce it. I think they just, they got side. They, they, they're trying to fix something or they're trying to bring it back on track, and it's just, like, going out of scope and out of time and out of budget, and it's just, like, they're just trying to wrangle it in. That's my suspicion. Yeah, I could see I could see them having development hell, and having that hard time with everybody in that having everybody on the same page with with a, especially with a precious game like that, you know. Mm-hmm. And then you got on top of all of that, you know, the one thing that you know no one really thinks about when they think about you know where SF five is, where KOF is, wherever it is is the uh, the pandemic. You know, all these people had to switch from work from home, adopt new processes, and get used to you know, working in a new environment and just that transition of moving from to the house and like learning how to work from the house has probably like killed so many deadlines just on its own merit. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, cause I heard, uh, yeah, they, they mentioned that, um, I think even Giuna mentioned this, that some of these, oh, like, I want to say it was Tekken. Mm-hmm. They were, they were supposed to announce that season really earlier on. Yeah. And you're, you're going to have like, character trailers and everything like that but you know the pandemic happened so yeah and i think um something similar happened with soul caliber like okubo san who was the producer for that game um like 
because they have released Cassandra, I want to say like January or February, and then again, there was nothing. There was radio silence for this their next big season. And then uh, this is the first we kind of heard of it. So yeah, I imagine like the pandemic just like halted a lot of plans just in general. Yeah. But uh, um, I also want to mention because <laughs> I'm a fan of it. Dragon Ball got an announcement of an announcement. The classic. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like Street Fighter and Dragon Ball both like we're, we're doing our own thing and uh, yeah, I don't know when Dragon Balls. They just said it's in. Yeah, August. they didn't give us a date though. That's the thing. <laughs> yeah, it's like sometime <laughs> in August. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's they always do that. At least with Street Fighter, they was like we have this date, and I was like, oh, that's cool. I yeah. get to tune in and watch that. But yeah, Dragon Ball, and then there was that weird comment about uh hiroki san about why she wasn't there <laughs> i'm not gonna say w- that comment that he said but if you guys are watching it was in my opinion very disrespectful but yeah i, th- I thought it was pretty inappropriate uh like i think i don't i don't now say i want to say it's inappropriate but i don't know if it's like a cultural thing and what it was was kind of yeah, okay to do that and but from our perspective yeah it probably was like yeah that, one, that was that was over the line buddy yeah. <laughs> And everybody loves Hiroki Sun, so yeah. <laughs> everybody go to they're like uh Beyonce's a beehive, you know. He's saying thing about her we're co- coming at you. <laughs> oh man. I don't know. Maybe they didn't like it too much when uh G Goku G two Goku was going going haywire. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe she went on a uh, high up on the list at that point. But hey man, but, speaking of Dragon Ball Fighters. Yeah. It's, it's undergoing something that a lot of new games are going undergoing right now, which is they're trying to bypass the way the uh, net code works by doing remote play via Parsec. And <laughs> I have many thoughts on that, and I'm sure you do as well. Uh, so, so which one of us going to drop it on first, man? So I'll go first since I love this game. All right. Go ahead. I'll, a lot of people will, if you're a close friend of mine or whatever, I put it on Twitter that I'm like on a fighting game uh, hiatus. Just, you know, nothing bad, just on a fighting game hiatus. So, but I thought it was pretty interesting right when I went on hiatus, <laughs> the whole Parsec thing and uh, Cloud thing started happening. Let, let me interrupt uh, you just for one moment. Mm-hmm. Why, why don't we take us a quick moment? Like, you take a quick, quick moment to explain, give a quick overview of what Parsec actually is before we start just ro- ro- rolling over. Okay. So, Parsec is basically a, it's, if I remember correctly, a, not like a cloud. But it's its own uh, remote system. desktop system where remote you can like go into someone system, else's yeah. uh, computer and do things. And do things. It's kind of like if I don't know if you guys, whoever, if if you had like any work at home jobs where people can like get on like your computer and control your stuff. It's sort of along the lines of that where you have like a second desktop, like you just said. So, and by you doing that, you don't have to worry about the the actual net code of the game. You, you you're using the host. Yeah, uh, it's, it's how you connect to each other like directly, and you play yeah. through the offline versus mode instead of the online mode. Exactly. So you don't have to worry about delay based net code. <laughs> <in that fact. laughs> yeah. So it's just like you two connect to each other, and one person has to take a little bit of the lag, but for the most part, it's going to be consistent and not like something that spikes up and down. And you mentioned yeah. earlier uh, cloud parsec, so that's a little different. Where you put your game on a third system. Like on an Amazon Web Service, uh, Azure Cloud from Microsoft or wherever, and you both of you connect to that third part, that third uh, neutral system via parsec. Right. So it's supposed to be, I guess, more fair and no host advantage. But you know, I just wanted to throw that out there before you started giving your thoughts. My bad. Oh no 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 no, that's perfect. That, that, it's like it's like like when the cloud system is kind of like its own like clean, like you said, clean server. No, nobody else is in it but you and like whoever you invite. So. It's it's very clean and then like but here's the bad part about it um a lot of uh it, if you're far away it's still not gonna do too much like if you're cross country I've, I've b- b- minus the um cloud service in this just parsec if you're yeah, far like away you're directly connecting yeah and you're directly connect, connecting you're still gonna run into issues so but what people have been doing and this is where cloud service comes in is they've been buying different like from what was it amazon cloud mm-hmm. ser- they have their own cloud service google paper space what they'll do is they'll get their own service and so that way that cuts out the whole uh that 
that adds to the, it makes it more cleaner in, ter in terms of like since you have your own server and now you can kind of like go further with it so i'm hearing like i've seen streams where people from like maryland play people all the way like in california or texas and i'm like whoa yeah and the players are saying it's fine it's better Mm -hmm. like like yeah. and then like the location matters like if like if i'm in alabama and you're in oregon you know we might set up the cloud server in like kansas so we can kind of meet halfway there so that's what a lot of people have been doing yep like I, and like we said earlier like the only bad part about it is like where you run into issues with uh the gameplay is if the host it has like a bad just bad straight up bad uh bad uh computer or pc or anything so, but if if you have a great if the host has a great computer, the person who's invited, they can have a potato and it'll work fine. So, man, so what what are your overall thoughts about how this uh just about Parsec in general? Like, what do you think about it in relation to DBFZ or in general? I so first going into it, I thought it was pretty cool, pretty good idea. Um, and I'm happy to see uh, other people like you know get that offline experience again um and you also getting people to you getting players to play players they probably wouldn't have like if on online before you know maybe offline of course but like online they wouldn't have so now you have exhibitions and stuff coming but the part that sucks is um you have it's kind of like a you kind of have to go through a huge like loophole i guess per se have to go through, through a lot uh, uh, if you're the host if you want to create your own um if you're just joining you just you just download parsec and you have like your own uh code or whatever and you join them but the problem i kind of see that kind of conflicts is that so if i'm a streamer right and i want to and people are watching me because i'm such a good like you know I'm such a good streamer. I'm I'm such a good like DBFZ player and people and I'm a high ranked DBFZ player online, right? And this is where it kind of conflicts. Um, people in the big I was I see that like in the beginning right now people are going to be excited for you to play some of the best players in the country, and then like Parsec with cloud service allows that. But I feel like after a while it might die down. And you you don't want to keep playing the same players over and over again. And some streamers, people, as spectators, yes, yeah, cool to see you play such and such, you know, strong player. But if they're playing them over and over again, that kind of like you know lose interest. Versus you playing somebody in ranked, and you could potentially go against somebody who a new player who's new, at, who's new uh, high rank, and now they run into you, and then you play them, and whoa, it's such such unknown players like beating this guy who is this player stuff like that like little things like that i feel like kind of conflict with uh, and it also kills the player base that's another uh um especially on pc it kills the player base on pc if, if you're playing dbfz on pc ranked it's it's like desert like there's nothing going on almost and, and it was already almost wasn't seen too much on pc already so it really kills like the um the casual rank system on um pc but it's, it's like i said it's, it's it's a give and take it's like you sacrifice that for a better net code and better experience that way you get to enjoy the game because i know a lot of people <clears throat> they i know some people drop dbfz because they simply couldn't 2h super dash and and i totally understand that because that is a big part of the game and that can kill your experience you know you know, it doesn't make you feel good. And then if you understand how delay based netcode works um, and how DBFZ, the game itself works, it, you're, it's a huge guessing game stacked on to another huge guessing game. So <clears throat> to like clean that up and like, you know, make it a little bit pop easier to like deal with or just make it almost close as, as long on, offline as possible, people will do anything. And I think the fact that and you do have to pay um, a certain amount depending on what service you use. Um, I'm not. Sh I know, like for Amazon, you pay like what seventy five cents an hour. So yeah, yeah something roughly yeah. like that. So th that that's another thing. It is a service that you are paying for. So, but what I'm seeing are people who are hosting, either they're having their own little group of friends, kind of like just joining or whatever, 
or they'll have like people come in in rotation that have already paid them already like you know whatever you know style play they did and they'll just have them come into a rotation and just maybe do like a kumite against a strong player or whatever so it's very interesting now i don't want to say it's a good thing and i don't want to say it's a bad thing it's i want to kind of see what happens you know take it day by day okay okay well, that was a lot of interesting thoughts because, like, yeah, it's pretty much it's just like, like you said, it's like people using it, like, if it was like an offline setup at a tournament or something, it's like, yo, I got next, and or here's our rotation. And so, it's just kind of funny how that comes about. But yeah, that's how I've been seeing, that's what I've been seeing as well. Um, as far as my thoughts, I guess I'll start from the beginning. So, I've been seeing, um, you know, the Grand Butte Blue community, the Sam Show community for sure, definitely jump on this. And then I've gradually seen the DBFZ look at it, but like, yeah, that's cool because it all kind of started with Marvel 3. And then other communities have been gradually expanding out to it. And then, you know, looking into it and some getting cloud services. And uh, and I think, uh, just to be clear, just to be clear, you're only paying for the cloud service. Parsec itself is free, whether you're the host or the client. But, right. uh, yeah, that's what I've been seeing. And so my thoughts, my thoughts on it are mixed feelings sort of like you. I will say the absolute good of it is for games like, you know, KOF 13, Marvel, Marvel 3, um, those kind of games that aren't going to get any more updates or develop or developer support, it is perfect, right? Because they're already kind of Discord fighters where you have to kind of sit in the community and get your matches that way. You can't just log on and, you know, get a KOF 13 ranked match <laughs> unless, you know, the, the planet's online. So for those types of games where, you know, you already, it's already a small group of people trying to hit each other up one on one on one, I think it is perfect, whether it's peer to peer or through a cloud service, however they want to do it. And so I think that makes those games playable and it kind of returns them to form. And so like, again, KOF 13, Marvel 3, a lot of those older games like Battle of Fantasia, whatever it is you play, perfect. Now where my feelings change <laughs> is when you start talking about Dragon Ball Fighters, uh, Samurai Showdown, Grand Blue, that's where, my, that's where my feelings start changing. You hit a couple of those points, but one, on the one hand, yes, it is really great that these people can have a good online experience, but what I what I'm going what I suspect is going to happen, and you and you touched on it, and it's already been showing kind of tones of it is, it's going to be a, a community split where you have we'll just say Grand Blue in a vacuum. So you have you know the, your PS4 crowd, your PC crowd, and so the PS4 crowd and the PC crowd are already struggling to find their rank matches because like there's a, an event that I forget what it's called. I think it's called like Sky Sky Fairs um collection or something like that i'm sorry if i butchered that where they kind of get together and they do like you know they go into a lobby and they just play each other you know because it's i don't, I don't want to say dead but you know it's, it's kind of scarce out there to get some matches <laughs> so what i think will happen if like a parsec reaches a newer game a game that just came out this year for people to play it so it's already kind of getting scarce so when i I consider it from Barry's perspective. So let's start out with the guy who's like, "Oh, I've been playing Grand Blue on my phone. It's fun. Let me play. Let me pick up the fighting game. Oh, nobody's playing it. Let me go to Reddit. Hey, hey I don't see anybody online when I go to ranked or lobbies. There's nobody there. And somebody goes, "Hey, you gotta join this Discord. Oh, okay. So anybody want to play some matches? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta download this thing called Parsec, and then we can play. What? They didn't say that on the box." You know, I just this game just came out. Why can't I find somebody online? And it may sound like whining, right? But the average yeah. person is not intertwined with the FGC through social media and communities. They just want to turn on the game and play. And for again, for an older game, that's not something that really happens. No one's like, no one's gonna buy a KOF 13 and expect like a populated, you know, ranked in casuals, right? Right. But you do expect that for a Grand Blue, for you know, a Mortal Kombat. Um, a DBFZ, a Samurai Showdown games that are very recent, and like out of all of those, you're only gonna get online and just you know Mortal Kombat, Tekken, Street Fighter. You can still buy those games and get on there, and it's still healthy competition. You can still find people. It's it's not you don't have to go through you know hoops and hassles for that game. And generally, I'm okay with that. You know, people use Discord Fighter as a term of endearment. And generally, I'm okay with that for, you know, for the lesser known games and for older games. But Dragon Ball Z, Grand Blue, those games should not be Discord fighters. And when they do, 
for newer games that are still coming out with like new DLC packs because Dragon Ball Z still has a new DLC pack coming out. Grand Blue still has a new DB, uh, excuse me, DLC com- coming out. Sam's Show just got announced a new DLC coming out. And then you go online and there's nobody there. You got to go. You got you can't even play it on your console game. You got to get the PC version or get on a PC and play it or get the PC so you can host it. Or find a group that's doing a cloud server and hope you can get enough games to play because you got to wait in line. You got to get in rotation. You can't just sit on there and mash rematch like you would any other type of game mode on a populated game. So I think that in a in an effort to kind of get around some of the ills the developers have caused, and I'm not blaming the players for this. I'm just saying like this is the kind of messed up situation that's happening as a result. In an effort to get around the ills for the developers kind of put in their face, they've kind of doomed. I won't say doomed. I don't like that. That's too intense. But they've they put a good fracture on how the communities of these games are going to build. Because like, if you want to go online and level up to an intermediate and then an intermediate level up to an advanced, that's going to be much harder now. Because you gotta you gotta be in the know. You gotta be in the in crowd now if parsec becomes the thing and i'm glad that people have parsec to play but i really hate that developers have made these games even worse by proxy by forcing people into something like parsec so i really hope that in the future they really take into account how these games play online and stuff because um you know if there's if there's no one gonna if who are you going to sell your DLC to when no one, when people buy the game and they're like, what is this? You know, you go on Reddit and you see a bunch of posts like, should I buy Samurai Showdown 7? Or well, I just bought Samurai Showdown 7 and nobody's on ranked. I'm, and then you look at them like, oh, that game looked cool, but nobody's playing it. I'm not buying it. So, you know, this it's, it's kind of the, it's kind of the necessity that's happened. And as a result, I imagine there's going to be a lot of splits and fractures in the in the various game communities, and it's kind of it's really sad to see. But at the same time, I can't deny that it's a good thing that they can play online. That's my thoughts. <laughs> no, I, I agree. That's totally hundred um, percent. It makes it seems like um, it's turning because you have the average players that want to become a fan of. They are already kind of fans of fighting games. But then that's there's that transition, like you said, where like you want to like get better and you want to kind of like just understand a little bit more. But then in order to you don't it's kind of like, you know, you're putting your foot, you know, deeper into the water. Right. Yeah. But but now when you put your foot deep into the water, there's like a guy under there holding it. And you're like (laughs) randomly there. and You're like, wait, what? He's like, well, if you want to go deeper, you're going to have to move me out the way. And it's like, I don't feel like doing this. I'll put my foot out the wall. Right. It's like that, like <laughs> kind of weird analogy, but still like, that's how it feels like for probably going to have to, how it's going to feel like for people who want to get deeper into fighting games. Right. Right. Like, and when they see ranked rank, oh, man, I can't stress this enough, but rank is such an important part of gaming in general. Mm-hmm. I don't think people realize that yeah. it's very important. So, it, I, like like and what i mean by that is like like i said earlier you can tune into somebody's stream and you type in you just go to twitch type in whatever game and you see first game thousands of people you know whatever and then um you click on it and it's like if they're not an influencer or if they're not you know one of those people that you know they're just there's there's not there's not they're not playing the game because like, like they're also like good at it but there's something else if they are playing the game because they're good at it you click on it you see you're like whoa like there's such such rank one two in the world the shrouds the ninjas yeah, yeah, yeah. The, uh, just the wongs the, um, all those people you, you watch them because they're such like you know they're good at these games they're so high rank so to take that part of it too that, like as a spectator that's you know that also get, takes away the, the whole fan aspect of a fighting game not just from a uh fighting like not actually just get into it but also get into it in terms of like a, a spectator point of view so it's kind of like we're shooting ourselves on our own foot just to i guess i don't know it's and I, when i mean we I don't, I don't mean really we i mean like kind of like the i would say the devs a little bit i don't want to try to i don't want to try to play a blame game yeah but um it's like you said the links that we're going to just to have like the ultimate experience of offline 
Man, you're just trying to be functional, man. Yeah. <laughs> we, yeah. We, we, we ain't asking for, you know, an exact replica of an offline. Just make sure that it makes sense. And that, you know, at the end of the day, yeah, I was gonna say because at the end of the day, I'm a fighting game. I love fighting games, right? And I pay and I like put in money to buy these games, and I want to have the full experience of like what I paid for. And if I don't be, if I'm not able to get like you know, the accurate full experience on like you know with the lay based netcode and and I can't go offline now, so it's like well, it's either two things. I go and play some indie game that I'm pretty sure I might not really, I really don't like. I'm just gonna like the netcode. Or I quit, and I quit this uh, game that I really like, and then I like its IP and everything. Or somebody mentions, "Oh, cool! There's a way you can, that you can make, you know, <laughs> yeah. the access and playable playability of it like better, like it's offline." Mm-hmm. Then I'm like, "Uh, yeah, sign me up." <laughs> that, hey, I would not fault anybody for jumping into Parsec. In fact, I would encourage you to do so. If you want to keep, you know, playing your favorite game, you want to level up. It's just there's there's a downstream effect that I think that's associated with it, but at the same time, it's not something that the players should have to worry about or care about or try yep. to control. It's not in their court. Yep. It's like I've actually used Parsec the because I wanted to test it out before I came over here and spoke about it. I played it in two different instances. I played um, Guilty Gear versus Nil, um, and it you know it felt pretty it felt pretty pretty decent like like I think he said like it felt like a, a two two or three frame connection but it was consistent and stable so it felt like you know it still felt like online but right. you know it wasn't spiking jumping all over the place and the other one I played a uh, Virtual Fighter Four Evolution on a PS2 emulator and I played that with Blackstar and again like a game like that that does not have any kind of native online at all like Parsec is is like the, the gift from above. <laughs> in a sense that, in fact, I've even told a couple people, like, I think Farset can do for older 3D games, like stuff like GGPO and Fightcade have done for older 2D games and bring them back into a way that people can play them. So like the old Tekkens, Virtua Fighter, you know, your Battle Arena Toshinens, you know, whatever. Those those kind of games can come back due to stuff like Farsec. So that's that's one thing I will say is amazing and I love, love it for. Yeah, I'm... Uh probably later on down the road not now i'm gonna probably set up uh parsec maybe with cloud servers so i can get some plus r stuff going on okay so because i've been anxious to play plus r i haven't played plus r in a long time (laughs) (laughs) i'm actually they probably got something like i imagine like a lot of those games probably got something popping like even if it's just like you know doing peer-to-peer with people in like your region or something just to get some reasonable games in yeah. Oh, another downset. Downs. Well, I guess we kind of hit on this, but not exactly. Another downside is um, you can't just hop on and play random like rank player mm-hmm. or just random player in general. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely a uh, by appointment. Though there is a feature in Parsec. Um, if you I don't know if you've used it yet, but uh, it's like it's called arcade mode where you can kind of set up your Parsec and share it with a particular application shared. So like I could turn on like you know ref 2 and then i mm-hmm. can have like an open lobby sort of it's not it's the same thing but someone who can see in parsec and they can remote in and just start playing some ref 2 now it's a little uh, unregulated in a <laughs> sense but it's there for i guess you know if you want to use it but it's not yeah, the same thing hmm, that's interesting you probably have to just do that with a larger group of people you know <laughs> yeah yeah like you can restrict. That's one uh, thing about Parsec. You can actually restrict what applications people can use. So you know, they're not having oh, to go okay. into your, uh, <laughs> into your, you know, credit card dot text <laughs> and ruin your life. Okay. That's 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 good to know. <laughs> oh man. So we, we we've been at this uh for about fifty minutes. Yeah. Uh, um. I know we want to hit like aggressive play styles. Do you want to like keep rolling through, or you want to roll that through to another show? Um. You know what. Uh, we'll hit aggressive play styles on another show. All right, I think we uh yeah, next, did pretty next, well on this next one. Time. Okay, yeah, I, th- I think so too. And I think it went a little longer than we thought, but I think it was pretty good. So we yeah. can uh, I guess I guess like if we're gonna make a mishmash of topics, I guess parsec and the round table probably go together better than uh, just throwing the play styles in there. But and we can just give our next show and we can make it fully dedicated to that and give it the, the attention it deserves. Yeah, oh, I have a lot of stuff to say about aggressive play styles, <laughs> man. A lot of hot takes. 
Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of things you can say because of the way what people think as aggressive and stuff like that. There's a lot of stuff, but yeah, we can get into it next time. But yo, yeah. anything else on the current topics, the round table, anything you liked about the DLC announcements, whatever. <laughs> I go to Yuki. Yes. Uh, <laughs> okay. They, yeah. He yeah. should have been the. He. They should have showed. Well, they did show him first, but they should have showed gameplay of him around like when they showed Kai and Soul, and then everybody would have been like, okay, I accept this game a little bit more. It's weird as heck, but you know, they go to Yuki. Let's play him. <laughs> like they, people would have been a little bit more hyper for the game, but I don't know. That's just my opinion. You, you can take it with a grain of salt, but I'm happy yeah. they finally showed him. You know, so super happy. Yeah, I'm I'm not one to be like, oh yeah, I see that character, I want to play him. But I will say that character has a very strong design and aesthetic on him. Very good. Yeah, I'm a big fan of like samurai uh, styles type characters, so that he's right up my alley. Yeah, it seems like he was just a big win with the community overall. So that was that was good to see. Yep. Um, like I, I'm happy for the tech. I'm happy Tekken's getting another season. I'm happy. I'm happy. Um, Sam shows getting another season. Um. What was it? Some was there any? Oh, my boy, uh, my boy Nitro Noodles got his character Setsuka. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. good old Soul Setsuka. Caliber. <laughs> the Soul Caliber Four Terror is back. It's, yep. it's Soul Caliber Six, and I don't, I don't know much about uh, Soul Caliber. I just dabbled in it. Yeah, she. So she looks, she looks pretty cool. You know, they they gave her an upgrade on her design, and she, she, I like it. I like it a lot. So. Yeah, uh, Dogie was messing with her in, in his stream. I was uh, playing VF at the time, but uh, he's messing with his stream. He basically is like, yeah, it's a Soul Calibur 4, sets a cut, but better. And so, you know, oh. I imagine. He, and he said that he, he he thought she was pretty fun and interesting and real, you know. That's some good stuff. All right, but yeah, that's all I said. And like I said, you guys have, don't feel ashamed for playing like Parsec, you know. Not, not at all. Go for Do not it. Not feel it. You have all the you you have a ball with it, you guys. You know, when I come back to fighting games, I'm hopping right in there. <laughs> That's what's up. But right now I'm in the Gundam Vortex. <laughs> oh man, I, I've been kind of waffling though buying that game because it's like you know, it looks cool. I see a lot of my friends playing it, but am I just gonna mess around with it for a month and then put it on my shelf? So we'll see. Yeah. Yep. Oh, Ghost of Tsushima. Have you have you tried that? I have not. I haven't played a lot of AAA games in a while. I, I typically like either play like JRPGs or, or fighting games. Yeah, I'm just I just walk around in that game because it's so beautiful. I rarely do anything. <laughs> I've heard a lot of good things about it from you know fighting game friends, from um, you know my coworkers and other people. So it sounds like yeah. it's, it's a good time. Yeah. But yeah, other than that, everybody stay self, safe, stay healthy. I've been making sure like I work out. My dumbbells came in, so I've been Uh-oh. hitting those. So <laughs> we gonna see you rip the rippling muscles next time. <laughs> Maybe twenty twenty three when we're allowed to, you know, congregate again. Yep. yep. <laughs> oh, Hopefully, man. if everybody keep their head on right and like you know wear a mask and you know don't congregate all the time everywhere, you know. So yeah, do do your thing to keep the, to keep yourself safe. Yep. But I got nothing else, man. So I'm going to hit you with with the peace out. Peace, everybody. Thank you for listening. Take care.